After 9 months, it's finally here, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Like many of you, I have been waiting to play this game ever since the first gameplay trailer was shown off back at E3 earlier this year. A game containing all of the characters and stages from the previous Smash games? What kind of madman wouldn't want to get Smash Ultimate? In fact, if you don't have Smash Ultimate in your possession right now, what is wrong with you? This is easily the biggest and best Smash game yet, containing over 100 different stages, 900 plus music tracks, and has the best gameplay in the series. You got all of your modes from the previous Smash games like Classic Mode and All-Star, but even these old modes have been altered significantly. For example, in Classic Mode, while you still progress fighter by fighter, the boss fight at the end will vary depending on who you're playing as. If you're playing as Mario, it'll be Giga Bowser, and if you're playing as Link, it'll be Ganon. The theme of the mode will also vary depending on the character. Like if you're playing as Luigi, you'll end up fighting more scary looking characters because Luigi is known for being cowardly. Or if you're playing as Daisy, you'll face other princess characters in the game simply because she's Daisy. <laughs> the intensity mirror from Smash 4 is back, and rather than the intensity be measured on a scale, it's measured by this fantastic looking mural that you can see more of the higher the intensity is. This is a brilliant way to handle classic mode, and I honestly think this is the best variation we've gotten so far. I also like the new black hole minigame where you have to run away from a black hole while collecting golden orbs. The only thing that sucks is that Target Smash and Home Run Contests don't return as modes, and it's a shame because I really like those modes. All-Star modes still consist of you battling all the fires in the game, but rather than fighting them with breaks in between like before, you instead just fight all of them at once without any breaks at all. While I don't mind this change, I do have to say I prefer the older All-Star mode. One of my favorite things to do in the break room is just walk around and listen to the peaceful music. Multi-Man Smash is also back with its own variation, and Cruel Smash is also back, and well, I'll just let it speak for itself. When it comes to characters, where do I even start? Like I said before, every character from the previous Smash games is here. Everyone! Snake, Pichu, the Ice Climbers, Jimmy Neutron, freaking Sans, the gang is all here and they control like a dream. If I had to describe Ultimate's gameplay compared to other Smash games, I'd say it's the equivalent of watching a YouTube video and putting it on two times the speed. It's way faster and hectic than Smash 4, but not as fast as Melee. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is up to you. Directional air dodging is back once again, and it works like a dream. A new element to the gameplay is finishing moves, where the camera will briefly zoom in on your opponent before they get KO'd, and unless you're on a large stage, 9 out of 10 times, if you see this, you're guaranteed a KO. I love this new feature so dang much. It's just so satisfying to see the camera do that. It's like telling you, yep, you did it. You KO'd that person, you KO'd them well. Use your trophy. Let's talk about online, shall we? It's actually pretty good. Contrary to many other people's experiences, whenever I play online, it actually runs pretty smoothly for me. I'd say I've only had one hiccup while playing online, and it only lasted for one match, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Maybe I'm just lucky. But every rose has its thorn, and I do have to say there are some things about this game that I don't like. There aren't many, but there are some. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the adventure mode. World of Light. When I heard that Ultimate was going to have an adventure mode, I was really excited. I loved the Subspace Emissary from Brawl so much, and I was really pissed that we didn't have an adventure mode in Smash 4. But then I saw gameplay of it when watching the latest Nintendo Direct, and well, let's just say that I was a bit skeptical. And it was right for me to be skeptical because the World of Light doesn't hold a candle to the Subspace Emissary in terms of quality. And it's a shame because the opening cutscene shows a lot of promise. The scene opens with, with all the fighters facing Galeem and its army of Master Hands, but then out of nowhere it pulls a Thanos and Flau eradicates all the fighters. Everyone. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Liz doing a channel update because I recently hit 100 videos. Well, except Kirby because plot. It then shows him waking up and seeing how the world has gone to crap, and I'm just thinking, wow, holy crap, this game is huge! This is probably going to be the greatest adventure mode yet! Then it loads the map, and you see you'll have to rescue some spirits first before you can progress, but I'm still thinking, well, okay, maybe this will only last for a small part of the game. Nope! That's all World of Light is. You traverse the world map and fight and rescue spirits, each with their own battle conditions. You also fight clone versions of the fighters that Galeem has created in order to rescue the real ones. Rinse and repeat for about 20 or 30 hours, and let me tell you, it gets really repetitive really fast. It also doesn't help that the difficulty curve for these challenges are all over the place. Some of them are piss easy, while other ones are just either unfairly hard or just flat out designed badly. Giving Ganon 40 more HP than me when one of his smash attacks can take away around 30 HP isn't fair. I like a good challenge, but stuff like this is ridiculous! There are plenty of other examples I could use, but I think you get the point. 
I initially tried the complete World of Light before finishing this review, but I got so burnt out from playing it that it just didn't seem worth it anymore. At the time of me recording this, I've only completed about half of the story mode, and so far, I'm honestly not that impressed. If I had to give the game one thing, I will say that like in Brawl, the cutscenes in this game are very well done, well, the small amount are in this game anyway, and they're even accompanied by full voice acting this time too. Also, I have to give this game props for giving Zelda a proper English voice. Granted, she only says like one line, but still. Nintendo. If you ever decide to do another Zelda game with voice acting, cast this voice actress as Princess Zelda, please. Overall, while World of Light is better than not having an adventure mode at all, I still have to say I am a bit disappointed. If you want to play a good adventure mode, go play the subspace emissary from Brawl. Trust me, you won't regret it. Oh yeah, I guess I should talk a little more about the spirits. Spirits are this game's new gimmick. Imagine them like power-ups. They can do all sorts of things to your character, like make them immune to zap or lava floors, make them huge, or even let them start a match with an item. Yeah, that's basically it. I'm pretty indifferent towards the idea. If they don't come back in the next Smash game, I honestly won't miss them. I must say that I am a little disappointed that trophies didn't return for this game, and while I understand the reason why they're not in the game, it'd still be nice if they were. These next two issues are more nitpicks rather than serious issues, but I still feel the need to bring it up. Palutena's Guidance and Snake's Codec Calls If you didn't know, if you go to Palutena's temple and quickly down taunt as Pit, you'll activate a conversation where Pit, Palutena, and Vareed talk about the fighters. You can also do the same thing for Snake if you go to his stage and quickly down taunt, but in Snake's case, they're only for the fighters from Brawl. Meaning, there are no newly recorded codecs for this game, and the ones that are used are 10 years outdated. Heck, in some of them, the characters will still say Brawl, even though this game is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. <sighs> Snake, what is it? Something about that hedgehog rubs me the wrong way. Oh, you mean Sonic the Hedgehog? But everyone loves Sonic. He's a big star. Do you have any idea how excited people are that he's here in Brawl? And for Palutena's guidance, they replaced Vree's voice actress with some random sound like voice actress, who is okay, but is nowhere near as good as Hidden Walsh, Vree's previous voice actress. And the thing is, they didn't even have this new voice actress re-record the old voice actress's lines from the previous game. So you essentially have two different people voicing her, and trust me, you can hear the difference. Kremlings? A race of crocodile people. I hear they like bananas. Ugh. Getting hit with a 9 will knock out any fighter with a single strike, no matter who it is. But these issues are just very minor and they don't get in the way of my overall enjoyment of the game. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is still the best Smash game we've gotten yet, and I'll be honest, if this is Sakurai's last Smash game, what a way to go out. And we're still going to be getting new fighters all throughout 2019 and even early 2020, so yeah, I'll still be satisfied. Because I honestly can't see how Sakurai is going to top this. With hundreds of music tracks, over 100 different stages, and every character in Smash history being in this game, this game definitely lives up to its title, and I'm giving this game a solid Cold Stone out of 10. If you don't have a Switch, you're seriously missing out, and I recommend you get one for this game. <clears throat> Ramen get a switch. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, I had to clear out my throat. I'm gonna go pee. Thanks for watching. Bye.